Hello there, beautiful joy seeker. I'm your host, Welcome back to the I Am Changing podcast. I think we're up to number episode 43. Today's episode is one of my latest blogs, Have You Tried Failing Forward? And it's 10 ways to change your mindset and achieve success because so often society makes us soft. You know, so many clients that I work with experience anxiety because they lack the resilient skills to pick themselves up off the floor after going splat against the wall. And I I actually think we can all resonate with that sensation of when we perceive we've failed. And I want to, I wrote this blog in an effort to encourage those to reframe their mindset of what if it's not failure? What if it's just a lesson being learned? So let me ask you this question. When was the last time you tried something new? I'm being quite serious now. I'm talking about when was the last time you were, you know, you stuck to something until you nailed the outcome you want, until you achieved what it was you set out to achieve. And I want to share an example of my tenacity. I hate tech. It is the fucking bane of my existence. Hate is a big word to use, I know. But when it comes to figuring out tech, I would rather have a colonoscopy without all of the good drugs because when the tech doesn't work, for me, it's so easy to go into overwhelm to the point there's tears, there's swearing, there's threatening to throw my laptop out the window. And it's at those times when I'm at the peak of my overwhelm that I literally have to remind myself how much my laptop costs before I open the window and throw it out in the throes of frustration is to change my mindset so that I don't have to lose control and navigate that four-year-old tantrum self. What I've learned is that stumbling, that, you know, that sensation of discomfort, this is a natural human art form. It's normal to stumble, to trip, to navigate your way around obstacles and to learn how to do that. And here's the trick. As long as you can propel yourself forward, you're still winning. You're not failing. You're learning the lesson. And I often remind clients, you know, how long did it take you to learn how to walk? Because sure as shit, you did not jump out of your mother's for JJ and start running around the block. No, you ate, shat and slept for six months. Then you learned how to roll. Then you learned how to sit up and then you learned how to crawl. And it took about a year for you to actually stand and take your first steps. That's not failure. That's learning. So to ensure that you can, a couple of tips that I like to share. Number one take a couple of mindful breaths because when we breathe slowly and purposefully this allows you to become present rather than running the old reaction pattern the present moment is a choice point it's that space that headspace that allows you to choose your next action rather than continuing and here's the key word reacting from a place of defensive you know survival And when we're in that reaction space, there's no clarity. We're just reacting. We're either fighting, fleeing, um, fawning, freezing. We're not thinking clearly. We're just reacting. Tip number three attempt is simply more experience. It's more lesson learning. I remind myself that I'm learning something new and I give myself a lot of there's extra patience, but permission to go, you know what? It's okay. Every attempt that I make when I'm doing a new action, I remind myself that I'm building muscle memory. And this is the foundation for the archive of all of my experiences. There's no pass or fail. There's no good or bad. There's just experience. And when we have this as our foundation, we can then leap from that and come back to that in a neutral present place rather than a reactionary survival space. Because the best part about learning is you are refining your brilliance. Therefore, your actions don't have to be perfect. When you gift yourself this awareness, you are practicing kindness to yourself. And this is one of the best forms of self-care that you could gift yourself. Allowing yourself to learn means that you move forward, practicing and refining your moves and figuring out what works, what doesn't work. And you're still using, you know, the frontal lobes of your brain that is back of your brain, the reptilian brain that just reacts to survive. Tip number three, connect with the feelings of trying. There's great emotional power to be embraced when you work from your heart space instead of your head. When you can embrace the feelings that allow you to step out of judgment about your performance and simply step into the cheerleader outfit of self-care because you can simply observe yourself doing rather than wishing. 
And the feeling that you get means that the next time, the more you practice this muscle memory of feeling, you'll then be on the lookout subconsciously for the feel good part of your experience. And you'll be less, you'll be more observatory of where can I feel good more rather than where am I surviving? So you start to naturally subconsciously reframe from the negative into the positive. Tip number four, set a reasonable time frame for any attempt that you make. Where possible, do not continue with the frustration of not successfully attempting something new for hours. Perpetuating a perceived failure only makes you in that moment. You're failing yourself for not being kind and not working from your actionary one. This can be demonstrated when you're training a new puppy. A couple of minutes with a treat to repeat that first step of the sequence that you're trying to create. This enables your body to create a dopamine effect that's associated with the attempt and the success of being kind to yourself rather than the outcome of pass or fail. I was reminded by uh, a tech coach that I once had. She helped me build my website, Natasha Burner. She was amazing. Still is. She's just not doing what she was doing before. And she would always laugh at me when I would ring her in tears. I've broken my website or I've done this or I can't figure that out. And she would say, oh, my God, how long did you spend on it this time? And then we would laugh and I would fess up to wasting three or four hours trying to figure out something. And she said, and did you turn off your computer and reboot it? Oh, my Lord, some of the conversations that she had and the simplicity of the advice that she gave of perhaps the internet's dodgy today, perhaps that's not working. Maybe the common thread was maybe it's not you. Maybe there's external forces at play that you're not meant to be doing this thing right now and go and cut yourself some slack because we all know when we get frustrated, we're not thinking clearly. We just want to get it done. (laughs) You know what I mean? Tip number five, have a plan. When success isn't that instant. And I know for me, this is where the Pomodoro technique really comes into the play. When those are, when I get those occasions that I am unable to figure out a problem, and it's usually tech, I'm going to be the first to put my hand up about my technotarditis. I gift myself 20 minutes to try and figure out, nut out, Google an instruction or follow an instruction that someone's given me. And if I can't do it in 20 minutes, I get up and walk away. And There's a couple of reasons for this. That singular action saves my nervous system 90 minutes to then have to calm down from an episode of overwhelm or anxiety because what I've done is I've stood up and I've turned and walked out of the room. What I'm doing is I'm changing what I see. My reality is shifting. I'm purposefully breathing. I often go and take a drink and I'll do something completely different which distracts the anxiety for it to calm down rather than going up to the next level and going cray-cray. And then what happens when I come and sit back down, I'm in a space where I see the problem differently. I see it for what it is. It's not me. It's external to me. That's a gift in itself. And it's more often than not when I try again, when I reboot the computer or I have another crack at the instruction I will realize that I've missed a step because I'm ADHD. Sometimes I struggle with all of, with there's multiple steps and I'll have to, you know, the, I struggle with the, the multiple lines, but I've got workarounds for that. So often when I have a second or a third crack, I can work my way through the issue. It doesn't mean I'm failing. It just means it could be very technical. It could be that there's lots of steps and nuances and things have to talk to each other properly. And as we know, often with tech, you need someone who knows what the hell they're doing with good internet speed and a good computer to be able to make all of that happen in a short amount of time. So cut yourself some slack here. And so this leads into the sixth tip, do something different. And so for me, I do something completely different for about five minutes and this reframes my visual reality it soothes my nervous system because i've got muscle memory i'll pull the towels out i'll do a load of this i'll put that into the dryer i'll fold that and i can go through that without having to do much thought but more importantly doing something different gives you a fresh view gives your brain because oh, i need a new program rather than focusing on that problem i'll just get the program for folding towels and this is what gives you the fresh perspective you look at the problem when you come back with fresh eyes and this is often when you open the door to possibilities the fresh perspective is where you find new options new solutions 
or you just have the capacity to take a deep breath and go, let's try again. Number seven, try bushflower essences. Now, you're going to laugh, but seriously, the number of times I have laughed until I've almost wet my pants with Natasha, my web bird, is I take Electro Blend Essence by Australian Bushfire Essences when there's anything electronic glitching. A couple of drop, a couple of those drops of that magical elixir, and I kid you not, the tech gremlins disappear. That blend was Electro Essence by Australian Bushfire Essences. Fairnicum. If you experience anxiety, you could choose the Rescue Remedy by the Bark Flowers. You might choose Emergency Essence by Australian Bushfire Essences. Energetic medicine is gentle and powerful at the same time. It works instantly and it opens up your mind. Tip number eight, try again. This is really important because when we quit, when something feels uncomfortable, that adds to the program called Shame, Blame, Guilt. And we'll get into that another day. But when we try again, you know, we'll go back to this tech example. I'll sit and make another attempt. If the tech glitches, I reboot the computer. That's part of my muscle memory now. There's no point trying to sort out a problem if the problem is actually with the computer itself. And if all else fails, I actually get on the phone to Natasha or send her a quick email. Hey, have you got five minutes? Here's a screenshot. This is what I'm trying to achieve. She'll call me on the phone laughing ahead of going, you've missed this step or it's really easy or don't even bother today. The whole system's down. There's no point getting your knickers into a twist ring for support, Google the answer, fall forward rather than stagnate in stress or overwhelm or worse, step back into your reaction um, program. I didn't realise that there's a secret to be discovered when something continues to not work the way you want. And the secret is that you're actually learning about working to describe the problem in detail. And you might not call it a problem, you might call it a challenge or I've got a boulder in my path. But it also supports you to know what to ask for help for from the big picture, migrating down to the microscopic view. So say, for example, you want to do a landing page for a sales thing that you're doing and it's not connecting to PayPal at the back end, but you actually have to go to a special part in PayPal to go and create the product that then backlinks to your landing page. And for those who don't have a shop, I apologize. You can't begin to imagine the man of mind fuckery that a practitioner will go through to set up their website. So say I feel your pain now, Karen, and we move on. But when you start to step through and I go, well, this part worked and that part worked and that part worked. It's a bit like I was working with a mar- someone training for a marathon and, and we got to a point where, or they were doing Iron Woman and she could run, she could bike, she could swim. But until she had to swim in the ocean, she realized, okay, when it's choppy and I have to put my arm over my head and I have to turn my head and the chop is blowing water into my face, there's the issue. It's exactly the same. It's not until, and it threw out her whole rhythm for the rest of the race. So when you can identify what the small detail is that is disrupting the entire process, that's empowering, girlfriend. You can do anything when you understand what that tiny little issue is. Tip number nine, know when to delegate. Sometimes tasks initially seem impossible and completely out of your sphere of existence. Here's an example. I recently received an email from my email platform providing me with exciting news <laughs> that Google was changing requirements for free email. And I just thought to myself, oh, holy bejesus, what am I going to do? Because to comply, my emails um, and to have my emails not land in the spam folder, I needed to take care of the SKM files. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of had to look up what that acronym meant. And frankly, I still have no idea, but I chose not to panic hit. I chose to be proactive. I watched the instruction video because it didn't matter that I needed to know what an SKM was. I just needed to know how to become compliant. So whilst I've still got no idea, instead of panicking, I remember that my website host has a brilliant technician and the web host performs miracles on little things like this every day. So I requested them to do the task, gave them instructions. I laughed and said, look, I'm so sorry. I'm a bit of a tech biology. I'm your girl, but this is beyond me. Bazinga, literally five minutes later, I still have no idea what that SKM link is, but the email platform now links correctly, problem solved. And I said, thank you very much to my tech wizards at the hosting platform. So tip number 10, let go of expectations of how your success will arrive. 
This one I think is one of the most important because it allow the experience of joy, of the simply being well enough to participate without the expectation of completing what you're attempting, that mindful practice of simply being present in that moment and allowing yourself to observe what's happening, what you're actually coping with, what you're problem solving, how patient you're being, what you're learning along the way, how much you're laughing. Often, at, I know for me, it's laughing at myself, at what a dillbilly I have sometimes, and that's okay. Because that is not tech is not my superpower. But when we do kinesiology and finding the root cause of, you know, people's challenges, I get a fucking gold medal for that. So, you know, everyone has their thing that they're really good at. And it's something that they've often spent time developing, time discovering about themselves, time appreciating that they have this skill. And it's not about boasting or being an egomaniac. It's something people, every one of us, you know, recognizes that we can do something well and you'd you'd be more than happy to teach someone else how to do it because you know how hard it is you struggle when you're learning something new. So to wrap up today's blog, this is your permission slip to continue dreaming. Dream as big as you want. Just be sure that you create small achievable steps using the tips that I've shared today to continue to the summit of the outcomes that you desire, knowing that you may stumble, you may trip, there may be obstacles along the way, and you may need to learn how to fall. Just be sure to fall forward. So to wrap up today's episode, let me give you a huge shout out for your support. And thank you in advance for liking and hopefully sharing this podcast to your own chain, having support and proactive discussion of how you can take charge of your journey steps throughout life, regardless of the challenges that experience may bring you. There are daily inspirational posts on my social media pages. Simply search for me using the links in the show notes below. To grow my podcast audience, it helps me a lot if you could hit the follow button. I'll be so grateful in advance. Chick, the I am changing mantra is a reminder that we can all choose to change and bloom from within.